Hello, I'm Liz Van Vliet and welcome to the Assist with Impact podcast. Join me as I explore the competencies and capabilities that allow you to assist with impact. I'll be sharing practical tips, strategies and insights that will help you move beyond what I call the order taker zone and be that little hinge that can swing big doors. If you're ready to be more proactive and have more impact in your role, then this is the place for you. Let's get started with the episode. Well, hello, 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 my lovely listener. Welcome to episode 190 of the Assist with Impact podcast. And you will not be surprised to hear that this is my last episode for 2023. So what I wanted to do in this final episode of 2023 was do a year in review episode, which I know I'm not, you know, I'm a bit uh, late to the party of year in review episodes. Pretty much everyone does it on their podcast. So bear with me while I do my very own Liz Van Vliet year in review. So I want to start with number one on my list because Just a heads up, there's 10 things that I'm going to talk about in this year in review. So number one is something that happened. I'm pretty sure I was trying to look back and work out when I actually did it. But this year, I'm pretty sure was when I changed the name of the podcast. Feel free to reach out, lovely listener, if I've gotten that completely wrong and you recall that I did this last year. Whatever. All I can say is this year, I really feel like Assist with Impact has really, I've stopped referring to Assist with Impact previously, the Being Indispensable podcast. I really feel like 2023 has been the year where the podcast really came into its own as Assist with Impact. So I want to celebrate that change because that was a bit of a change that, uh, you know, took a bit of a mindset shift for me, because it not only meant that I was accepting and embracing the fact that I was going to continue on my podcast journey, but it was also acknowledging that I was making a pivot. And the pivot from changing from being indispensable was simply acknowledging that, you know, in the time that I've been doing the podcast, that title being indispensable was always quite divisive. I always said in my introduction that we're all dispensable. Anyone that's seen me speak or present knows that I'm a breast cancer survivor. So I know better than anyone that we are all dispensable. But when I started my podcast and I went out and I asked assistance via LinkedIn What is one word that you would use to describe how you want to show up as an assistant? The number one word that I captured in my survey feedback was indispensable. So I actually felt that there was, and you know I love this word, serendipity in calling the podcast being indispensable. The being part speaks to the fact that we are human beings, not human doings. And whilst we can aspire to be irreplaceable and indispensable, we're actually not. And we all know that. But it doesn't mean that we can't develop and invest in the skills, the values and the behaviours that are going to make us be perceived as exceptional. So that that was number one, really pleased that being indispensable made sense for a long time, but pivoting to the branding of the podcast as assist with impact 
also made sense because that is ultimately what I want for you, my lovely listener. I want you to be able to assist, and I do not apologize for that word, assist with impact. Yes, there's been lots of talk this year about, you know, I've seen various posts about people hating the term assistant and the whole word assist. But I, you know, if you know me, you know that I want you to embrace the fact that being an assistant means you are being of service. It's not about being in servitude. So moving on. Number two things in year and review. Well, I can't do this episode without talking about the fact that this year I celebrated my 10-year cancerversary. Yes, people, I lasted 10 years from when I was diagnosed with not just one, because I'm an over, uh, you know, I'm an overperformer, but two forms of breast cancer. Went through what I describe as treatment highway, got on the backside of recovery highway, which did kick me up my backside and managed to come out and make it onto Survivor Highway. So very, very pleased to be able to celebrate that midway through 2023 around July with not just you guys, my lovely listeners, but my wonderful family. And that has meant that 2023 has been a very special year indeed and continues to be a special year as we celebrate what 10 years on from breast cancer looks like for our family. When we were going through my treatment, I had my oldest daughter, Kate, was in year seven, just embarking on her high school journey. My youngest daughter was in kindergarten And my middle daughter was in year five. And now here we are at the end of 2023. And I've literally just got back last week from my beautiful daughter, Kate's graduation from her double degree in, yes, I'll tell you what it is because I'm an oversharer, economics and international security studies. We always joked when she started that she was either going to be a spy or a diplomat and actually no, she's going to work for a consulting firm. So watch out consulting, strategic consulting people, because she's coming for you. My youngest daughter has just finished year 10 and celebrated the end of year with a haul of awards and achievements at their, uh, you know, private school end of year celebration, as they do in that, that sort of world. And she has continued to build her sporting prowess this year, representing Australia as a volleyballer of all things. So if you know me, you'll know I'm a netball mum from way back. And Tessa, my youngest, that was not the path she wanted to take. And my middle daughter, the gorgeous Abby, has just turned 21 this last week. And I'm literally recording this podcast in the midst of preparations for our family dinner that we are having tonight to celebrate our beautiful Abby, who is our literally our very own son in our family orbit. So number three, something business related. I embraced a word that I came to know when I was working way back early in my career spider frame days at IBM, which is the word coopetition. Coopetition is, uh, there's a, I know there's a special name for these types of words, but I can't, a palindrome, a palindrome, I don't know. Anyway, it's a, it's a word that combines cooperation and co- co-op and competition. Get that out, Liz. So, In 2023, I was really pleased to be able to partner with so many people that are my peers in the executive assistant and admin professional training, coaching and mentoring space. People that I respect enormously and I value their contributions and their input so that is what we call coopetition. 
where we can coexist together. I'm not necessarily right for everyone. There will be times where I may be right for you, but you may also benefit from one of these other wonderful trainers, speakers, coaches, and mentors. And that is something that I've been very proud of in 2023, that I am a person that people know is able to co-op to co-opetish. What's the I don't know what the right way of expressing that is, but I embrace co-opetition. So what that means is that I'm not threatened by other people. I am not threatened by what other people are doing in this wonderful community of admin assistants and admin professionals. I bring what I bring to the table, they bring what they bring to the table, and we can work together whilst also pursuing our own business objectives. Because let's face it, people, I'm not doing this for charity, much as I would love to be able to do it for charity. But what that also means is that I'm also not afraid to stand up against people that don't embrace co-opetition and are what I would describe as, and this is an Australianism, copycats from Ballarat is the what we used to call them when we were kids. People that are imitators, people that are not original thinkers, who jump on, you know, things that I have done and I have said. And in 2023, I have proudly stood up and banged my own trumpet as a pioneer in the administrative space for power skills for assistance, whilst watching other people in the industry try to jump on that bandwagon. And that's just fine. They can do that, but they're never going to do it as well as I do. And that is where it's not about co-opetition. It's just simply about imitation. So in 2023, I have also embraced just owning my own originality and my own ability to contribute to this environment and this discussion and this education process for you wonderful, lovely listeners, but also call out people who do not reflect the same integrity that I would like to see. Number four, I was really delighted to rebrand my business from my EA career to the linchpin assistant. And I'll make this very short. The reason I did that was because I realized that whilst there are people, lovely listener, that are listening to my podcast who are what they would describe, what you would describe as an executive assistant, there are other people that listen to my podcast who are in other administrative professional roles. And I want to be inclusive and embrace all assistants, but also help you see your way clear to spending more time in that zone that I call the linchpin zone. If you want to learn more about that, you can certainly find more about that on my website. Number five, I want to reflect for a minute on my word of 2023. If you go right back to my first episode of 2023, I talked about the fact that my word of the year was renew. So, Checking in at the end of the year, Liz, let me ask you, how's it been? How's that been going for you? Well, Liz, let me tell you, it's been a bit of a mixed bag. There's definitely been renewal. I have definitely embraced what I tell you to embrace, which is progress, not perfection. I'm not perfect. I'm never going to be perfect. I'm always going to be a work in progress. And in 2023, I'm really pleased to say that there were definitely green shoots in terms of my personal well-being and self-care. Is there still room for improvement? Absolutely. But I'm starting 2024 feeling a lot stronger. Well, I'm ending 2023 feeling a lot stronger and more positive and optimistic. If I think back to the start of 2023, I was feeling apprehensive. I was feeling 
a bit vulnerable and I was feeling hopeful when it came to my personal life and my personal well-being. As I start thinking about 2024 and where I'm at finishing 2023, I feel much more stable. I feel way more realistic and I feel like I am embracing being a work in progress and I'm really proud of myself for that. Number six that I'm thinking of in terms of year in review high points, going global in a physical sense. Yep. COVID, I was definitely global virtually and pre-COVID, I was global in a virtual sense. But in 2023, I have got on that plane and I have seen the world, people, and I am so excited about that, that I've been able to go and spend time with clients and assistants around the world. Particular shout out to the wonderful assistants at the Bank of Canada and the wonderful professionals that I support in the UK at Stubborn Mule Travel and the wonderful people that I met in New Zealand from all manner of organisations in the training that I was involved in running in Auckland and Wellington in October. And I've also gone physically like all over the shop, man. All I've been on that plane like there's no tomorrow. So shout out to all my new lovely listeners across Australia who I've had the pleasure of meeting and connecting with this year. So finishing this year feeling tired, travel worn, but really terrific. Number seven, some things that I'm proud of. A, continuing this podcast. Let me tell you, if you're thinking of starting a podcast, your enthusiasm and energy will wane very quickly because podcasts are a slog. They are a labor of love. And the fact that I've been doing this podcast now for seven and a half years, let me tell you, I am proud of myself for that. B, being a unique voice. I am proudly a connector and a communicator. I am not a lifetime EA, but I bring to the, to, the, to the table different skills from being in my sales and marketing role for so many years, selling into the C-suite, selling ideas, selling concepts, selling value, translating technical ideas for people that were not interested in so much the technical details, but interested in the business value, the impacts and outcomes that what I was selling them was going to deliver for them. And isn't that interesting that that is exactly what I talk to you about being a salesperson? C, in terms of things I'm proud of, helping you be on the front foot when it comes to artificial intelligence. And as I've said from the get-go, it will not be people that can't, that are not using AI that lose their jobs. It will be people that can't use AI and resist using AI. So I'm really proud of the fact that I have led from a podcast perspective sharing ideas, tips and concepts to help you get your head around AI and that I've also done that in my training this year as well. D, things that I'm proud of in 2023 is starting, you know, the year, the first half of the year, being a sceptic when it comes to what I felt were people, you know, 
trying to tell you that the chief of staff was the be all and end all and the role that you should aspire to. And if you weren't, there was, you were missing the boat and you were not ambitious as an assistant. And I'm really proud of the fact that I owned being a sceptic and I really found somebody that I was able to bring to you feeling that I was in my integrity and that was Maggie Olson in the rest of the episode I've just released. And I spent a lot of time talking in the first 10 minutes of that intro of that episode about why I was a sceptic, but why I feel that Maggie and Maggie's offering is of value to you, whether you are an aspiring chief of staff or whether you are simply wanting to spend more time being effective, not just efficient, and being strategic. And the last thing that I'm proud of when it comes to things that I'm proud of is exactly that is that my focus in the podcast this year has been about supporting you to be effective and efficient and helping you understand why that's so important. And really, when we talk about the rise of AI, that is where AI can be very efficient. But AI is, is, you know, if we think of effectiveness as doing the right things rather than efficiency being able to do things right, AI can help you do things right. It's great at doing things faster and easier, but it doesn't have the ability to know which are the right things to be doing. That's where you can demonstrate your value. And that's what I'm all about. So, number eight, what to expect in 2024? More global gallivanting. Yes, more ways to communicate effectively. Hot tip, people don't read your emails, they scan them. Be scannable. That's not dumbing down, that's embracing the reality that people are busy. They don't read your emails, they scan them. And the third thing to expect in 2024 is more AI tips, tricks, and ways of leveraging it in your role. So in terms of the global gallivanting, I've already got some things in my calendar for 2024 internationally, and I'm really looking forward to adding more things in whilst I still have the space available. So that brings me to how you can work with me in 2024. First way is by doing one-on-one coaching with me. But I have to tell you people, I love working with assistants as a coach, but I'm becoming it's becoming increasingly more difficult for me in terms of scheduling that in and so I'm choosing in 2024 to be very selective about who I work with so my coaching will be by application only if you're one of those people that thinks you would benefit from coaching with Liz either a single session a five session package a six month package or a 12 month package please feel free to reach out to me and get yourself on that list of people to be considered. Number two in terms of how you can work with me in 2024 is corporate presentations tailored for your organisation. So those are 60-minute and 90-minute keynotes up to two-hour workshops delivered face-to-face and virtually. And I can provide you with my rate sheet for that sort of way of working with me. Third way is by doing some training with me. And I have already got some schedules that are coming for 2024 that I will be announcing. So keep your eyes peeled and I will continue to work on scheduling those in. Number four is webinars and online masterclasses. And I'll be announcing the first of my webinars for 2024 
over the Christmas New Year break. Something to help you kick off 2024 on the right foot, the front foot. And finally, one way that you can experience me differently in 2024 will be via my new LinkedIn newsletter, which I will be announcing. Watch this space. But I can tell you right now, it is called Admin Insider. And I am going to look forward to be bringing that to you. So, Final thoughts, number 10 for this episode, my year in review, is my deep, deep gratitude for you. If you've listened this far into this episode, I'm even more grateful, but I'm grateful for every single one of you that has connected with me, that has validated me, that has affirmed what I do and how I do it in 2023. And every single one of you has a special place in my heart. So I want to wish you and your family a safe, healthy and prosperous Christmas and 2024. And I can't wait to be back in 2024 with some new episodes of the Assist with Impact podcast. So signing off now from Liz with a nasty virus. So um, apologies for if you detected a cough that I'm going to try to edit out, but it may have been in there. I am thinking of you. I value all of you and I appreciate you. Thanks for listening. listening to today's show. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see the show notes, head over to my website. It would be great if you haven't already done so. If you enjoyed the show, if you could kindly go to iTunes and leave a review. It helps other people find the show. Thanks for listening and have a great week.